Hello everyone, Gramsy here, and welcome back to another Thick Thursday, the best source for your weekly VR news, just juicy facts and stories presented in an easily digestible way for your virtual reality needs. This week we have massive breakthroughs in eye, face, and full body tracking technology, real life, VR transformers, and meta just can't stop being relevant for even just one week. So obviously more news from them. We've got a lot to get through this week as well as a brand new segment so let's just jump right in now normally i'd just throw this under the meta news but this is really more reality labs news than it is meta reality labs for those who don't know is the department within meta responsible for creating and developing all of meta's new hardware and software for the present and future and this goes back a ways even before meta changed their name so reality labs has been working on project codec avatars for a while aiming to bring ultra photorealistic mind-blowingly accurate face and eye tracked avatar solutions inside of VR. It combines the aforementioned technologies with AI smart processing to animate the faces of users to a hyper-realistic degree in real time. Now, normally this sort of thing only works with really high-end PCs or some significant cloud computing because of just how much power and resources are required to generate something like this in VR. So Reality Labs decided it was time to bring this tech to standalone by just making their own chip specifically designed for this and the results are this teeny tiny 1.6 millimeter chip right here it gets paired with a snapdragon xr2 the hallmark chip used in quest 2s to simultaneously handle both computing power and also be able to render face animations with relatively low latency or frame drops in a standalone headset i can't even imagine how much more insane this might get if you had some like serious cloud computing backing you up now the timing on this is a bit suspicious admittedly as we know, Meta has their upcoming premiere headset project, Cambria, aiming for a late 2022 release. So while I don't think it's super likely, it is possible that we could see something like this make it to Project Cambria. But still, as far as actual hallmarks for VR goes, this is incredible. Speaking of tracking solutions, full body tracking has been a constant problem for VR enthusiasts and hobbyists alike, basically since the inception of mainstream affordable VR as we know it. Everything has been tried from traditional sensor-based tracking solutions to rigging Xbox Connects to a computer and some base stations. And while it's definitely possible to get good full body tracking solutions nowadays, it usually can't be done, at least not very affordably anyway, and not without sacrificing some quality in any case. Some researchers at Future Interface Group, the same ones responsible for creating last week's mouth haptic feedback device, decided to create a full body tracking solution out of existing technology. Camera based inside out tracking, yes, the one technology that has always struggled more than any other to have full body tracking solutions. But the genius of what they're doing with this lies in its absolute simplicity. As we know, a lot of upcoming future headsets like Cambria have controller-based inside-out tracking, rather than placing the cameras in the headset and having the headset track the controllers, which is generally the more traditional style. It's the same inside-out tracking method used by most commercial headsets currently. Well, Future Interface Group basically slapped a couple body-facing cameras on each controller, and surprisingly, it works decently well. I mean, it isn't perfect, it has some latency problems, and it isn't as precise as other full-body tracking solutions, but considering the exceedingly low cost of these camera lenses and that it could be easily integrated with existing technology, this could seriously revolutionize full body tracking solutions for everyone in the VR space right now. It definitely needs some work to get better, but this ingenious tech proves that it can at least be done. So Meta, can we have our legs now please? <laughs> but now it's time for this week's THICK snack. A recently published paper from the University of Chicago shows how researchers are able to use electronic muscle stimulation, or EMS for short, to manipulate a person's head and assist them during VR and AR experiences. And talk about immersion, while it's creepy to think of someone else influencing your body with EMS, I love this picture they have where your body reacts to inputs from a boxer in game. Imagine feeling like you actually got punched in VR if someone decked you. Wow, 
Just amazing. And now, back to the news. What are these robots? Why do they look like real life transformers? And is that a freaking VR headset? I can't make this stuff up, ladies and gents. You are genuinely looking at the future of robot based construction technology right here. And it actually integrates VR controls seamlessly to allow the operator to fully control the robot. This is being developed by JR West, a major railroad company based out of Japan and can be used to fix power lines, construct bridges or railroads and in general operate in hard to reach areas that are just too difficult or dangerous for human interaction. But this is just a prototype, albeit a really exciting and functional prototype. Though this technology is only designed for use on railways right now, JR West has said it could be very easily adapted to a number of different industries. Currently, they're aiming to launch this transformer dude in spring of 2024. Ever wanted to find love in the metaverse? Maybe you're just over IRL dating and want to try something different. Well, Flirtual, the new VR-based dating app, is here for all of your relationship needs. If this sounds familiar, it's actually because this isn't the first time an app like this has come about. Several months ago, I covered another VR dating app called Never Met on Thick Thursdays, so this isn't a new phenomenon. In any case, the app allows users to do all the same things one would expect out of a dating app. Post your profile picture, which is a VR avatar, create and customize your own profile and description, and swipe left or swipe right on potential partners. The creators of Flirtual have stated that the fact that your profile picture is your VR avatar means that the app is more personality based and less about physical appearances. But I don't know, I mean this doesn't seem too far off from something like generic online dating or dating apps like Tinder or Bumble, so what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments section down below so we can start a conversation about it. But now it's time for your VR, VR game, game of the, of the week. week. The new segment where I talk about cool or exciting games, either current or upcoming in the VR space. This week's game is Beanstalker VR. Now I covered this game a long time ago and reviewed it on my channel, which you can find right here if you're interested, but essentially it's a VR roguelike with some RPG elements and procedurally generated maps and just tons of monsters to slay and items to create. Additionally, they released a four player co-op mode back in March, so you can slay monster bugs with the homies or just chill in a lobby and drink some slime together. Here's a short clip of some shenanigans I got into with fellow content creators Bull Chase and Soul BC while trying to race to the extraction point inside of Beanstalker. Ah, no! I got you. I got you, fam. Just fucking run for it. Oh, he's, he's sucking on your toes. What? Come on, homie. We're leaving, boys. We're leaving. Going home. Going home, boys. <laughs> and now, back to the news. This is the dreaded moment you have all been waiting for. I know, I know, everyone's tired of hearing news about Meta. I get it, it's getting a bit old for me as well, but it seems like every week Meta just keeps finding ways to stay relevant and wiggle their way back into the news cycle. So here we go. There's a lot going on, but I'm just going to start with what everyone has been talking about the most. The aforementioned Reality Labs branch of Meta is losing money. A lot of it. And fast. Meta's quarter one earnings call was last week and there was a lot of stuff to grapple with, but I think what most people paid attention to was that Meta lost three billion dollars. While this may seem like a lot to most people, this isn't actually all that much money to a company as large as Meta, but still, it's not like this is an insignificant amount of money. Among other things that came out of Meta's earning call was Mark Zuckerberg himself warning people about investing in Meta, and he's actually been pretty open about this for a while, stating specifically that he doesn't see Metaverse investments really being highly profitable or significant until the 2030s, which is a a while even by investment standards. I don't know that this is going to hamper Meta necessarily, they're a massive company, they have insanely deep pockets, and I think as long as they keep making progress, they'll be able to keep their investors happy in the meantime, even if it is much more long term. To that end, we do have some more insight into what Meta has planned for the future, and what the upcoming Project Cambria is going to look like price point wise. Several days ago, a report from the information came out 
now claiming that Meta's Project Cambria headset would be priced around $800. Now, normally you see companies ignore reports and speculation on things like this until they're ready to officially unveil their products, but oddly enough this time, a spokesperson from Meta claimed this report isn't accurate, and in fact, the Project Cambria's cost will actually be, quote, significantly higher. Does this mean we'll see it approaching Valve Index's $1,000 price point? It's possible. I suppose only time will tell, but this also points to Meta's future strategy, which seemingly indicates that they might just be releasing four new headsets by 2024. This includes the obvious Project Cambria, but will likely include a Quest 3 or some similar upgraded Quest version, as well as two additional VR headsets, which are supposed to be improvement versions of the Cambria and Quest 3 platforms. Overall, this pretty much indicates Meta is kind of aiming for the traditional tech company model of releasing at least one major product every year. So I'd kind of anticipate this becomes the general trend of all the major VR contenders within the next couple of years. Sony, Valve, HP, Meta, and HTC, I think this is sort of where VR is going to be very soon. And while it can be exasperating keeping up with the constant stream of new tech, I think it also means that VR will be evolving more and more rapidly, which is undoubtedly a good thing. But that's it. That's all the time we have this week, everyone. If you're still watching right now, I appreciate you more than you will ever know. Remember to punch that like button if you thought this video was informative. Subscribe if you want to see more of it next week. And hit that notification bell if you just cannot stand missing out on these oh-so-sweet dummy-thick VR news clips. I love each and every one of you beautiful father muckers. Until next time, Grimsy out.